Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I've got another do-it-yourself PC buyers guide for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm checking out CPU coolers for small form factor systems. Now, what makes these distinct from other CPU coolers is they're really tailored to specific cases and specific clearances. So unlike in desktop systems, you're gonna be constrained by the size of your system. And that means most of these actually come in around the same price. And so you're not really cross shopping them based on price, like I'm gonna get the more expensive one or the cheaper one. Really what it comes down to is what's the best cooler you can fit in your system. And this comes down to very specific height restrictions that have become more or less standards in the industry. And it starts with the 47 millimeter tall box cooler from Intel. Now this is not on my list. It's not a particularly good cooler, but it has set the standard for many years at 47 millimeters tall. So a lot of cases that are very, very compact do have this cooler in mind or perhaps the AMD equivalent, which is about 55 millimeters tall. But let me go over my list, starting at the smallest and going to the largest, keeping in mind that these are all around the same price. So this is in no way from cheapest to most expensive. That's really not the point of this guide. It's really to get you the best cooler for your system based on the size, not on the price. So starting over here with the NH L9 twins, the L9A and L9I from Noctua, these come in at 37 millimeters tall, which makes them shorter than the Intel cooler. And that makes them really good for any system that can hold the Intel cooler or some systems that actually require something smaller. Now there are some even shorter coolers on the market. I haven't tested them and frankly, I'm not going to because when you get below these coolers at 37 millimeters tall, there's just not much you can do with a cooler to make it really good. So if you're constrained to that, I'll just have you pick the cheapest one that's out there. I don't have any specific recommendations under 37 millimeters tall. Now, interesting fact about these two coolers from Noctua, they are not the same. They don't just differ based on the mounting system. One is for AM4, that's AMD, and the other one's for Intel. They are actually slightly different sizes because of the different socket and mounting system of those two standards. And here's a fact. The AM4 version is actually more powerful than the Intel version. Now you'd never compare these back to back because you can't fit them in the same system. But actually Noctua has confirmed to me that the AM4 is slightly more effective. It's actually 45 grams heavier. That's because it has more metal. It's slightly larger and that translates to better performance. So if you're an AM4 user, you actually have that advantage because these two coolers actually come in at the same price and you're getting more metal for your 40 bucks if you go for the AM4 version. Moving up to a 47 millimeter class cooler. Frankly, I don't have a cooler that I really, really love to replace the Intel cooler, but the best I've tested is the Black Ridge right here. And a lot of people know about this. Unfortunately, it's not available in the US. This is, as far as I know, only available in the EU, maybe some other regions as well, but not in the US where I'm based. This is a very good cooler, but it has some limitations. The first is that the size of it is, you know, at 47 millimeters tall, you're very limited. And to make it better than the Intel cooler, they basically had to expand it out over the RAM sockets. And that means you are very limited to low profile RAM nothing higher than 34 millimeters. I always use Corsair Vengeance LPX, which is sort of a standard in the industry when you have a low profile cooler. So if you use that, you'll be fine. That's what I tested this cooler with. The other issue with it is that although the heatsink is really exquisite, the fan is not that great. It's a cheap 80 millimeter thin fan. It doesn't produce a lot of airflow. And in my testing, it was only okay. It wasn't particularly quiet. It wasn't particularly effective. And a lot of people said after I posted my review that, hey, I should have flipped the fan because by default, it actually blows up through the heatsink. And people said, if you flip it down and pull through the heatsink, it's 10 degrees better. Frankly, I don't believe that. I don't think it's gonna be that much better if it's better at all, but feel free to experiment with it if you do pick up a Black Ridge. It's probably the best cooler you'll find at 47 millimeters tall. And mostly what you're paying for is a really nice heatsink which is unfortunately kind of hard to fit in a lot of cases, and then saddled with a poor fan. You may increase the performance a little bit going with the Noctua fan that's on these coolers, but overall you're still limited to that 47 millimeter height. Now moving up a size class, we get to coolers under 60 millimeters tall, and this is actually typically defined as 58 millimeters or shorter because of the cases that are out there on the market. I know there are a few cases out there that require 55 millimeters. I don't have a specific cooler for you in mind, the 58 millimeter tall coolers I have differ in one way. The Shuriken 2 from Scythe is excellent if you're very concerned about RAM clearance because this does not sit over those RAM slots. 
It's a great cooler at around 40 bucks. Higher performance can be achieved with this cooler from id Cooling, the IS60. It actually is named 60, but comes in around 58 millimeters tall, and it has exemplary performance. I've not found a better cooler under 60 millimeters. And the fan it comes with is pretty good. In fact, that's the key to its performance. It's a 15 millimeter thick fan, and it's a full 120 millimeter diameter, which really gives it a lot of airflow through the heatsink. So I'm really impressed with that cooler. It comes in around $45 or so, and you can get it in most places. Again, it's not a new model. It's been around for many years, and it's an excellent cooler if you need something under 60 millimeters and have the ability to use low-profile RAM. Either you have it already or you're willing to buy it because you cannot use anything over about 36 millimeters. I've tested it with Crucial Ballistics. The newer version of Ballistics released in 2020 doesn't work. So you have to go shorter than that. Again, Vengeance LPX is the standard from Corsair. Moving up another height step, going up to 70 millimeter coolers. Now, this is actually the tallest cooler I'm going to be talking about because although there are coolers above this, and there are some cases that are designed for coolers like 85 millimeters, there aren't actually coolers out there at that height limit. So if you're concerned about RAM clearance, you go with the Big Shuriken 3 from Scythe because it's offset away from the RAM slots. It won't cover up those RAM slots. You can have the tallest RAM in the world. You'll still be fine with the Shuriken 3. But better performance can be achieved with the L12S. I've compared these in benchmark tests and found the L12S is significantly better despite both being around the same height, 69 millimeters for the Scythe and 70 millimeters for the Noctua and having a similar appearance overall but the Noctua is simply better. And because the Noctua costs $50 versus 45 for the Big Shuriken 3, it's sort of a no-brainer going with the Noctua if you're willing to go with low profile RAM. Again, that's gonna be the limitation on a lot of these coolers. If you don't have something like Corsair's Vengeance LPX and you have something taller, all of my best recommendations here aren't gonna work. The Black Ridge, the IS60, the L12S, you need that low profile RAM for that to work. Otherwise, you go with, well, nothing at 47 millimeters, you stick with your Intel cooler, sorry guys, uh, or you go with one of these shorter ones, and then uh, you know go with the scythes that are really designed around RAM compatibility. Now, the L12S has a trick up its sleeve, which is you can flip the fan up to the top, which would actually put it at 85 millimeters tall and increase the performance. You can even go with a dual fan configuration for that cooler, maybe going with a thick fan going up to 95 millimeters. So the L12S has a lot of options for you to increase the performance and the heatsink has that capacity to utilize those better fan configurations. So the L12S is a fantastic cooler at 50 bucks. Now, what if you need even more cooling potential than any of these air coolers can provide? Well, then you go with a liquid cooler, and I specifically recommend the PF120 from Silverstone. This comes in at $80, has really cool ARGB effects, which may add to the look of your system, and it performs really well. I found that it actually outcompetes the very popular Corsair H60. Now, one thing that I really like about the Silverstone model is that it can fit where other liquid coolers can't because it has flexible tubing and it has a fairly low profile pump, which is really important if you have to sandwich your cooler on top of the pump. And that's required in a lot of modern cases. And if you have a really tall decorative pump, that's going to be a huge problem. One example is Deep Cool. I really like their coolers, but it has a very tall pump, which is fine in an ATX system. It's a no-go in a small form factor system. Another brand that I love but won't work in small form factor systems is Arctic's Liquid Freezer 2 line. The 120, the 240, 280, and 360, they're fantastic coolers but because they have very thick tubing that's not flexible at all, and because it comes directly out of the pump and cannot be positioned in a lot of different ways, it's basically a no-go in a small form factor system. So I will be recommending the Liquid Freezer 2 and a lot of other videos on this channel, but not in this video because I don't recommend it for a small form factor system. Now, what if you have even more space? For instance, a tower cooler, like my favorite cooler, the Scythe Fuma 2, that's 155 millimeters tall. Well, then that's what you go for. In my benchmarks, I found it actually can outcompete the PF120, and it's only $60, so that's the one you go with. Now, of course, the Fuma 2 is not a small form factor cooler, and that's why I don't have it in my lineup here. But I love the cooler, and if you can fit it in your case, good for you. Definitely go for the Fuma 2. But keep in mind, that's really a desktop cooler, and the only reason it works with some small form factor cases is because designers have caught on to the fact that it's such a fantastic cooler and they've designed their cases around the Fuma 2 specifically at under 160 millimeters tall. For everybody else, these are my recommendations and I benchmarked them all. Not necessarily all of them against each other because frankly it doesn't make a lot of sense. Yes, I've gotten a lot of requests to do, for instance, the Intel cooler versus the L12S 
or something like the L9A versus a PF120, I don't think that makes a lot of sense because you shouldn't be cross shopping these coolers. You need to focus in on the size class that you're shopping in. So it's not about price. Again, it's about the size. Just maximize the size based on what I have lined up here. These are the best in their size classes. If you get one of these, you will be happy. Now, if you have any questions about this roundup, definitely post them down below. I'll be sure to get back to you. If you enjoyed the video, definitely give me that like and subscribe. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I'll catch you next time.